So hi, Micro Hunter here again. And uh, today I want uh, to talk about so-called Barlow lenses. I've got uh, two here, which are for a stereo microscope. And I'm also going to talk about the Barlow lens uh, concerning uh, for telescopes, uh, because I received a question from one of my viewers and I simply would like to read the question out to you now. Hello, Oliver. Well, that's me when I'm not called micro puncher. That's how people call me normally. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for your work. Uh, both of your channels are amazing. Now the question, many mostly cheaper microscopes have a Barlow lens packed in, usually two times and uh, two X, and probably to cross the 1000 uh, times magnification barrier. Does it have any advantage or is it only a marketing trick? Thank you for your answer and I wish you all the best. Well, of course, also thank you very much for your question. Small correction here is I do not only have two channels, I have a third microscopy channel as well. It's called uh, Microscopic Mysteries. The links are below and uh, check it out. I think it's uh, quite nice as well. Well, first of all, I'd like to start off uh, by giving you um, an overview of how Barlow lenses like this one here is used uh, are used for telescopes. And I'd like to talk about Barlow lenses for stereo microscopes and and also last but not least for compound microscopes. And to quickly answer your question, I think Barlow lenses for telescopes and for stereo microscopes are very useful, but uh, I consider the use for Barlow lenses for compound microscope very limited. As a matter of fact, indeed, uh, only introductory or children's microscopes sometimes come with these. Um, I think they're not useful because there are other and better ways to solve the problem of magnification. So, but let's uh, get started with uh, telescopes first so that uh, I, um, you, can, you understand a little bit of what, what they are. Um, I've got a telescope here and this is uh, this telescope has a focal length of uh, 400 millimeters. So we do not talk about magnification in telescope uh, when we talk about telescopes but about focal length. And the total magnification of this is, is 400 divided by 25 uh, means that there it's uh, has a total magnification of 16 times. Now if you want to have a higher magnification especially if you want to look at planets or the, the moon for example or so then uh, you want to uh, increase the focal length and one way how you can increase the magnification of a telescope or to increase the fo focal length so to say is, is to insert um, a Barlow lens between the objective and uh, the eyepiece of the telescope. So in this case the two times um, Barlow increases the focal length of the telescope from 400 millimeters all the way to 800 millimeters and uh, the length of the te telescope barely changes right so this means i'm doubling the magnification and uh, by simply inserting a small uh, additional optical element here with a barlow lens uh, of that uh, small size i'm doubling the magnification without really increasing the size uh, of the telescope so uh, barlow lenses in astronomy and in uh, yeah with telescopes are very useful um, especially if the focal length is is, uh, is low like in this case okay so now what about uh, what about Barlow lenses for stereo microscopes and I have uh, two of them here um, and uh, these uh, Barlow lenses uh, are not uh, attached uh, between the eyepiece and the objective but rather they're um, attached uh, between the specimen and the objective so basically it's uh, attached in front um, of the objective and uh, what they do is, is they also change the magnification and here it's like this that uh, we have a Barlow lens that it says here it's 0 0.5 times so this one actually reduces the magnification of the stereo microscope you might be surprised a little bit why is this useful why do you want to reduce the magnification yeah i'm going to talk about that and this one here it, um, actually increases it so this one actually looks like a magnifying glass okay um, and the other one here uh, this one here is is a concave lens which dissipates the light and which makes everything appear smaller and uh, I've, I'm, I'm illustrating this uh, right now here. You can see that one of them actually increases the magnification and the other one decreases the magnification. And uh, also the Barlow lens for the telescope um, also decreases the magnification. But because it is mounted between the objective and the eyepiece, it actually increases the magnification of the total system. It's uh, sometimes a little confusing because uh, whether a Barlow lens increases or decreases uh, the magnification, or rather, I should rather say, whether a concave lens increases or decreases the magnification depends very much where you place it. Well, and in order to illustrate uh, my point, uh, I've made this little uh, diagram here. And what we can see is, is we can see now different uh, places where you can put uh, the Barlow lens. 
um, yeah, here, here it is, okay? So either you can put the Barlow lens uh, uh, beneath uh, the objective, so the specimen is down here, um, or you can put it between the eyepiece and the objective. So this first configuration that is used by, by telescopes, okay? Um, as I already showed you, and uh, some compound, uh, uh, compound microscopes, children's microscopes also use this. You have an extra tube that you can insert, which is then the Barlow lens. And uh, for telescopes, that's uh, quite useful, okay? Because the overall um, increases the fo focal length of the system here. Now, uh, uh, down here, I put the word Barlow in, in quotation marks because traditionally Barlow lenses always were concave lenses uh, that are used to increase uh, the magnification. So traditionally in, in telescope, in astronomy, that was actually called the Barlow lens. But in recent years, I think the impression that I'm getting is that any additional optical elements that are installed in the system to change the magnification, they call this Barlow. Um, and what we have here is, is that here, if you put a convex lens down here, then you have increased the overall magnification. And if you uh, put the concave lens down here in front or below the objective, then you decrease the magnification. So these uh, two examples are the two, um, yeah, the two Barlow lenses that I have uh, have here, okay? And this one up here, that is the one that I've got here, okay? So that is uh, simply to give you a little bit of an overview and also to um, explain to you a little bit that the position of the lens determines both cases here it's a concave lens but the position determines whether the overall um, it overall increases or decreases the magnification yeah simply wanted to give you a short overview on this and uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to attach uh, the two times Barlow that I have here beneath my stereo microscope. And uh, what this does is it doubles, of course, uh, the overall magnification, but also it significantly reduces the so-called working distance. So I have to move quite closely. And in my case, I could not even move close enough to the volcanic rock that I'm looking at right now. And for this reason, I actually had to raise it up a little bit. So I put it on my little uh, MP3 recorder um, and then I had to raise it up. And uh, this uh, allowed me then to um, yeah, to uh, see uh, the specimen in focus. And because the distance was so close, I also had to attach um, a ring light. Otherwise, it would not have been possible to use the ambient light of my room to illuminate the specimen. Yeah. And uh, now what about uh, why would anyone now connect a 0 0.5 magnifying uh, Barlow lens, this, which reduces uh, the magnification. Well, what's the point here? Microscopes are supposed to magnify, not reduce magnification. Well, in, with stereo microscopes, it's like this, that sometimes the objects are simply too large. And by um, attaching a Barlow that reduces the magnification, you're also increasing the working distance. So you can actually move the, the microscope a little bit further away from the specimen. And this gives it a little bit more space to work on. And also a second advantage is, is that if you're doing photographic work, sometimes uh, if you don't have the Barlow, there, you might not be able to fit the whole specimen um, on the picture and uh, therefore by reducing the magnification you have you're able to fit the whole specimen quite nicely and the larger working distance also means that you're able to sit a little bit more upright because there's a little the, the microscope is not quite as low yeah so there are a couple of advantages here so these um, are quite uh, quite useful even the one that magnifies two times and the reason is is because um, we are not yet reaching with stereo microscopes at least we're not ready yet reaching the the uh, the resolution limit okay so magnifying it uh, actually does, uh, you, know, you, you are able to see more things this way. Maybe because uh, there are additional optical elements, it reduces contrast a little bit because the light rays are kind of, kind of bouncing off the surface of the lens and so on. So it should be coated and all of these things. The lenses should be coated to minimize reflections. I, I bought those two because I simply wanted to also have a little bit more things that I can attach to the microscope and to experiment around a little bit. So enter. Barlow lenses for uh, compound microscopes. And uh, basically these are, um, um, yeah, all the little uh, tubes or not little, little, sometimes very long tubes that you can attach uh, between, yeah, the eyepiece and the objective again. And this kind of means that there is a large tube extending here. And this uh, also increases uh, the magnification significantly. And especially low cost and children's microscopes, they sometimes uh, come with these Barlow lenses. And the question that you now asked, at least the viewer that asked is, does it actually make sense? And I'm going to give you now a slightly balanced answer. From an optical perspective, it does not make sense, okay? Because the resolution is determined by the objective of the microscope and simply making things appear larger. Well, they will appear larger for sure, but they will also appear more blurry. So I'm not going to gain, gain much more um, image information, especially if the optics are cheap um, and low cost as often the case with 
introductory microscopes. I mean, you don't, uh, if the objective is not able to deliver the information, then the eyepiece and, and Barlow combination is not able to regenerate this lost information, right? You cannot do magic. Um, that's not simply not possible. You cannot simply make or create information that is not there in the first place. If the objective doesn't deliver it, so then of course yeah, the eyepiece uh, Barlow combination cannot compensate for that. Um, but still, I think that uh, especially for children and uh, beginners, um, there's simply more things to try out. And I think that's one of the reasons why these manufacturers included them is uh, because then you have uh, two eyepieces, a low magnifying one and a high magnifying one and a Barlow lens. The Barlow lens essentially almost costs nothing. Um, and yes, from a marketing perspective, yes, you can say that it magnifies now a thousand times. Honestly, it doesn't make a lot of sense to magnify a thousand times with introductory microscopes, I think, uh, because the light intensity is too low, it's blurry, um, it's difficult to focus, a whole range of things. But I mean, yeah, if kids are happy with it, then why not, I say. Um, so, but uh, I would say that uh, if you want to increase the magnification, two options, go up with the magnification of the objectives and uh, exchange your eyepieces. Now, I need to say that sometimes it is indeed, it does make sense to um, increase the magnification even beyond the resolution limit, um, especially if the things that you actually want to see are very small, even at, uh, yeah, at a high magnification. And if you exchange the eyepiece or insert a Barlow lens, then simply the small structure that you see will simply become larger Yes, it will be more blurry, but it's simply more convenient to look at it because it's not so small. You just are going to see the whole thing a little bit larger, filling up the field of view a little bit better. So sometimes, yeah, it, it might make sense to go beyond the magnification limit. Well, just forget everything I just said right now. I visited AliExpress, which is a Chinese retailer, and I discovered that they sell Barlow lenses, which cost around four US dollars. So you might as well just buy, buy yourself an, a Barlow lens there and try it out yourself because the cost is so low. And it's certainly much cheaper than buying yourself a second set of eyepieces with a higher magnification. And maybe you're going to be satisfied, okay? Um, I certainly, I this when I saw this, I ordered myself a set, uh, a pair for my microscope here, simply to try it out. So, and finally, before I stop, I want to do the following. I just want to show you, I want to simulate how the image would look like if you were to attach a Barlow lens here. Now, I don't have a Barlow lens specifically for microscope, but what I have is, is I have my Barlow lens for the telescope. And I'm gonna show you some magic now because I have a little adapter here, okay? This adapter is able to fit, go right in here and then Okay, I have to screw it up a little other. Okay, now. Okay, so there's an adapter in here now. And look what I'm doing next. I'm taking out this one here and it, it, it's able to go right in here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to hold this here in, in front of the, yeah, in front of the tube. And then I'm going to show you how the image looks like with um, and without the Barlow lens. So simply that you can see that it indeed does magnify the image. If you don't have a Barlow lens and if you want to have a, a small do it yourself project, uh, if you want to tinker around a little bit, I can. Um, advise you to do the following try to increase the magnification without barlow okay take this out again and simply extend the tube here okay extend this um, and i don't know maybe you can make some something with a black cardboard and then look through it and then refocus it's also going to appear larger okay it's, the effect is not quite as strong as if you were to include a barlow but it's also possible so if you want to really increase your magnification still further and you do not want to add any optical elements well then simply uh, increase the distance between the eyepiece and the tube of the microscope, you'll also have more magnification. Uh, that's just uh, for experiment <laughs> experimentation, okay? So yeah, so I'm gonna show this to you now. So this is uh, what we see um, on the left side, a picture taken directly through the eyepiece at uh, 40 times with a 40 times objective on the right side, the same eyepiece, but only now with a two times Barlow attached, the telescope Barlow, obviously not the one that's supposed to work with uh, microscopes, uh, but the effect is clearly visible and the circle on the right side, if you see in the field of view, this the circle, well, that's the part that was enlarged. So the color is a little bit different because of a white balance issue, so for just forget about that. Um, but as you can see, it does work. Um, so on the picture on the right side, that is uh, as if I were to have a total magnification of um, 800 times. Uh, because 40 times 10 is four, 400 times now with a two times Barlow, that's uh, around 800 times magnification. And um, it does work reasonably well. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, 
probably very high magnifications are not very meaningful, uh, but uh, why not? Why not try it? Uh, Parlos, uh, as I've uh, showed you, are quite uh, cheap, and if you're satisfied with them, you might as well simply give them a, a try. Um, I would say the best way still is, is to um, buy dedicated eyepieces uh, and do not expect any miracles, as I already mentioned, because yeah, the resolution is determined by the objective, and uh, every um, optical element that you add in the light into the light path only will decrease the image quality. But as, as you can see in this case, the decrease in image quality is not really that high, um, and therefore it might be yeah, it might be a feasible solution. The black spots that you see on the right image, well, that's uh, simply some dirt and dust which uh, was on the Barlow lens. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. If you like the information in this video, please consider subscribing. Check out my website, check out my other YouTube channels if you're interested and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.